Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. Hard-headed. We're excited that you've joined us as we have a conversation. Hard-headed. Happy New Year. New Year's. Happy New Year's. New Year's. Well, I'm kind of glad it's it's uh, we're, we're getting past the holiday season. There is a uh, popular podcast that I listen to that I'm not going to name here because I'm kind of slamming it. Had a commercial that they were talking in, in there, and they said, uh, well... M I S S, miss K I S S, kiss T I S, tis, yes, tis, but they pronounced it tis, hmm. tis the season, and I like <laughs> <laughs> every time they said that I wanted to turn the uh, turn turn it off, but I didn't. I resisted, but it's like tis the season. I'm like, no, it's tis, not tis. Anyway, oh my gosh, tis no longer the season. We're uh, we're moving on with uh, 2023. Let's do got a, it. Got a great episode for you today. Troy's going to tell us what's on his mind. We're going to go into a, a funny uh, a funny top three here that may create some discussion. This was a lot harder than I thought it was. Top three actors who would play yourself in a movie. Yeah, that's good stuff. It's going to be interesting. Top three actors who would play <clears throat> yourself in a movie. And then uh, Matt's going to bring us a good word. Possibly. Troy, what's on your mind? Oh, there's going to be a good word. <laughs> Maybe two. We don't know. Yeah. All right. So for the new year, starting us off, uh, lately I've been thinking you know, certain things have just been happening. Um, recently I found out uh, a friend has an illness. Well, more than one friend has so an illness, uh, life-threatening illness. Uh, found out a couple weeks ago, an old friend of mine passed away suddenly. Um, and so it just got me thinking about how life, life's just too short, right? A vapor. A vapor, as the good word says. And uh, so when you have friends that are sick, I mean, especially when they're, when they're far away, there's, you know, first thought you can feel hopeless, right? Like, or helpless. Like I can't, I can't do anything for you. But as a believer, that's just I go to the Lord for that, right? Mm-hmm. So I always, you know, hey man, I'm praying for you, and I make it a point to to do that. Yeah, uh, I think a lot of people say, yeah, man, I'm praying for you, and, and maybe they don't, or maybe they are. I hope they are, but you know, I've been even guilty of that. Going, hey man, I'll pray for you, and then not do it, and then not do it, or maybe say it one time, and yeah. But but for these, uh, you know, later in my life and, and these friends of mine, I've been really trying to stay consistent and be in prayer with them and for them. And so it just got me thinking about how how life is too short. And then in my life, when things happen or when bad things have happened in the past, gosh, 10, 15 years, mm-hmm. I've always kind of joked around and said, you know, uh, it's just... Because it's me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Trust. Nothing bad has ever happened to anybody else. I, exactly. Right. Like, right. But I, but I kind of put this uh, out there on myself. Excuse me. Bring this uh, QT coffee cappuccino right here. It's got me a little gassy. Wow, pardon. With the, the, pardon me. Free plug. Yeah, free nice plug. Time. QT right there. It's good stuff. <sighs> but anyway, um, yeah, so I've kind of put that jokingly onto myself. Like, you know, if it's going to happen to me, it's going to happen. You know, it's I've even been known to say, you know, Murphy's Law, it should have been Trussell's Law because if it's going to happen, it's going to happen to me. Yeah. Uh, I have an independent insurance agent that, that does our insurance for us. And ever since I've been using her over the past three years, like crazy things happen. I know crazy things happen to other people, but time over and over again, she said, I have never had this happen with any of my other clients. Yeah. Just like just trying to get signed up or just did. Yeah. Getting signed up or, you know, we moved and we didn't switch our insurance when we moved because we had to get a certain insurance to get the mortgage to pay for this, help us pay for this house that we wanted and then when we moved in, we knew we needed a new roof, but we just we didn't switch it. And so when that hailstorm came or windstorm, we ended up getting a new roof. 
but it was like this horrible deposit and it was just a big ordeal yeah fighting with the adjusters and roofing contractors and it's just, it's a thing it's just yeah. a thing like if it's going to happen it, it it's going to happen to to trussell mm-hmm. right and so i've just had that for years and murphy's law brought the definition a supposed law of nature expressed in various humorous popular sayings to the effect that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And so I've kind of put that on myself. And for 2023, I'm done. You're not going to say trust the law anymore? I'm not, I'm not going to do that anymore. Yeah. Because I honestly believe the words have power. The tongue is the power of life and death, right? That's scripture. Your mouth and the words that you say have power. And whether you're manifesting stuff or, or not through your words... Well, that, you're, you're putting yourself in a, an attitudinal position. How do you like that? Ad, attitudinal. Write that one down. That ought to be our band name. If we ever had a band. <laughs> attitudinal. What do you think? think Matt, that a good band name? Mm. Welcome back to the conversation, Matt. <laughs> Matt's over there trying to order pizza or yeah. something. Um, attitudinal changes do not just come out of the blue. Yes. I was making sure it was a real word. But I mean, I, I heard if you keep like, saying it, your attitude's <laughs> going to be oriented in that direction. And if your attitude's oriented in that direction, you're going to always think about how bad everything could be or is how you think, how bad you think it is when actually it's not. This kind of goes back to uh, something that we talked about months ago on the the nocebo, the placebo, and then the nocebo, oh, yeah, yeah. where you yeah. adopt the negative uh, side effects, even though you were given a a placebo. Yeah. And then you like, you got, you know, what, what we get diarrhea with every drug you take or whatever, you know, I, I took this pill. Now I have all the bad symptoms. Yeah. All the side effects yeah. I got with them. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of the same thing. Like you're, you're like, Oh uh, yeah, here we go again. Exactly. Yeah. And so recently, uh, on Christmas Eve night and Hannah and I had kind of had this conversation before, uh, Christmas and Christmas Eve night, we're hanging out uh, up in the kitchen and cooking some dinner after we got home from church and everything. And my eight year old loves to go downstairs and play games. So as soon as we get there, he runs down there. Well, he's down there five or 10 minutes and he comes shooting back up the stairs. Like, Hey dad, dad, there's water. There's water. It's dripping. What? And I knew immediately what had happened because that the past three days leading up to that, our toilet in our uh, master bath had not been filling up. Yeah. So I, it's like, uh, frozen pipe. I'm pretty sure it's frozen, but I mean, yeah, for those not uh, familiar with the Wichita weather that we had leading up to Christmas, we had uh, real temps below zero. We had eight straight days with below freezing. It never got above freezing, right? <clears throat> and uh, wind chills and like minus thirty six, I think, was the lowest that it went because the wind was blowing yeah. like crazy. Yeah, it was nasty. So he comes, you know, he came running upstairs. I immediately knew what happened. So I ran downstairs to the water shut off, immediately shut it off. And, uh, of course, walking down the hall, you know, squish, squish, squish. Yeah. So, you know, busted pipe. So what do we do? Ended up, you know, wife got the shot back down there. I sucked all the water up. We mm -hmm. uh, looked at all the damage, uh, just put fans on it. We've, we've had this happen before in a previous home. So not because of ice, but just because of a, a leak. Busted pipe, yeah. Uh, so we, we knew what to do. And so we got to talking about it uh, that night and the next day, and, and we had remembered, you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna look at this as a horrible thing. We're gonna, maybe this is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And so since we had that mind shift and that, you know, good attitude about what had happened, you know, hey, I'm glad we were here when it busted. Yeah. You know, so that we could. They didn't fill up the basement. Exactly. Yeah. We weren't swimming down there. We didn't lose a ton of furniture and have to restore all kinds of walls and everything. We caught it quick. Um, insurance adjuster came out day after. Well, the plumber came out first, fixed it. It was an easy fix. We actually had money in our bank account to fix it. Uh, insurance adjuster came out the next day, gave us a nice amount to where we'll be able to, to fix it. Uh, like the drywall and the carpet. The, the drywall, the ceiling, pay, pay ourselves back from the plumber, mm -hmm. get new carpet, new floor. Like everything is going to be taken care of. Yeah. And we'll probably have some money left over. Uh, so 
just looking at everything in a positive light, it was just a better situation all around. Yeah. And the so where that pipe runs, the dryer vent runs out right there too and, and goes ah, okay. out the house. That's where you're getting your cold air in. Well, no. Yes and no. But so we found that uh well Hannah found out that they put that pipe together with duct tape. Like the not duct work tape, like the aluminum or yeah, the aluminum stuff that you're supposed to use or yeah. but they use like duct tape. Mm -hmm. After seventeen years, that's that tape that melts and it just disintegrates. Yeah, but it is duct tape. Correct. And you're talking about ducts. Right. Yeah. Air ducts. Yeah. It sounds like ducks, like quack, quack, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you're saying they use duct tape on this duct, which they shouldn't have used. I, I get what you're saying, but it's kind of funny that we're saying they invented that tape for duct work. <laughs> right, but they shouldn't but have used it good. because yeah. it's not good. Use the aluminum tape. Over time, it, it disintegrates. Yeah. And it had disintegrated, and all of the uh, insulation in that, you know, in between the, the, the ceiling and the floor above, all covered in lint. Yeah. So like huge fire hazard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we got to take all, we took all that stuff out and replaced it with new. We uh, pulled the whole duct work out, taped it all up with, with uh, the correct tape that you're mm -hmm. supposed to use. So that's just another positive thing. Like yeah. maybe this small little flood that we had stopped our house from burning from down, burning down. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, that's kind of what's been on my mind lately. Just, just looking at the world through a different lens. So you're doing, so that's a, is that a new year's resolution or no, is, is that a, it's not a resolution. I don't like, I, I personally don't like resolutions because they last. Said, hey, we're starting out 2023. You kind of teed it up like this is right. But resolutions last about two weeks, right? I don't know. For the average person. That's okay. why gym memberships, they, they run off of the monthly memberships, right? Cause people go for two or three weeks, the first of the year. And then, and then they're done, right? Yeah. So I'm not calling this a, it's just like a diet. Same thing. Like you're going to go on a diet. It's a for, lifestyle change. Yeah. This is a lifestyle change for so, us. So is a diet. No, no. No, it's not. A proper diet's a lifestyle change. But what I mean. No, if you, your diet is what you eat. That is your diet. And it needs to change. It's a lifestyle. But okay. in the yeah. sense that people are selling like, hey, you need to be on keto. It's know, a diet. That, it, that's it, a diet. With this okay. new uh, path of positivity. Oh, is that what you're going to call it? Hey, that's what I was getting to. So you know how people... I'm sorry are, I interrupted you, but path of positivity. Over, that sounds like the book you ought to write. Over the past few years, I've been hearing people just claim a word Yeah. on the year. Uh huh. Well, my word's positive. That's like a resolution. That's like a resolution evolved. See, and that was mine 20... One, was it 21? I, no. You were just going to stop commenting online. I was going to be more of the, the I wasn't, negative thoughts in your head. I wasn't going to be gonna negative. You were going to have the negative thoughts in your head. You just weren't going to comment on people. That's true. That's That was yours. I'm going to restrain myself. I want to know what this new path are the signs on the highway going to bother you as much? Or are you going to look at them positively? Dude, I can still be bothered and be positive. <laughs> Cause I, uh, so now it's no different than my resolution to where <laughs> <laughs> I was driving, I was driving somewhere, uh, just this last week and I, I caught a sign and, but unfortunately the glare, you can't read it. Oh. But I was like, Oh, I'm going to send this to Troy. Oh yeah. But what the, did it say? Do you remember what it said? It was something like if you drink in the holidays, you're going to jail or something, something like oh, that. Yeah. DUI, uh, drive you know, high, get a DUI, something along those lines. Yeah. It was kind of funny. Yeah. But now I, 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 I see road signs and I think of you. So maybe our listeners do that as well. Excellent. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not excellent. So do you have, what, what are your, you two, what do y'all do resolutions no, or do you do a, a word or I what? Don't, I don't do any of that. I typically make fun of people that do, do, do the words. <laughs> uh, but I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I, I, I did have a, a really good December with my staff and we have a word for 2023 around what, what I, I want to have them accomplish at work. So 
I'm doing it, and I teed nice. it up with. I normally make fun of people that do this, but but you're doing it too. All right. Yeah, yeah. Matt, I'll cover mine in the good word. Okay. All right. I'm looking forward to hear that. Okay. But I mean, do you remember like growing I'm glad, up? I'm glad you're engaged right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm really glad that you got the pizza order. Remember, remember that word. And, so, uh, uh, but you remember growing up? I mean, going back to the uh, the the power of thought, and so it's 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 not really. I don't I don't like the word manifest because I, I it gets overused and yeah and uh, but. Growing, sounds Joel Osteen. That's what I don't like about it. Like, yeah. uh, but but growing up, it was you know just be positive, think positive. You know, I'm, I'm, parents always told us that, or at least told me that. You know, or you know, don't be negative, be positive. You know, think about this in a positive way. And it, it when you do that, everything your 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 viewpoint shifts. Everything changes, and your attitude changes. And then the people around you pick up on that, and then it it changes them as well. So it's it's a uh, I mean, it's that's a noble uh, resolution, or not necessarily a resolution, but a noble lifestyle change. Um, because I really do think that it it, it it's so easy to think negative or be negative. Um, it's it's it takes a lot more energy to think positive and look for the positive things because there's not always a lot there, uh, but there's always a little something there. And if you're looking for it, it just it changes your it changes your view. You see, uh, you see things better in other people. You see things better in yourself and, and in situations. And yeah, I mean, it's uh, you can reduce a lot of stress uh, doing it that way. I, I that was kind of not necessarily my goal in 2020. Um, I was just trying to disengage from social media. It was 2021? Yeah, 21. Yeah, yeah. And it, you know, be a little bit more positive and and not not feed into that negativity and try to be a little bit more positive influence. Um, and I think it worked out a, a better for me um, that year than it did this, this last year where I just kind of let in a little bit more. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, w- I would say that I'm, I'm kind of trying to focus on the same thing for, for 23, be, be more positive. Well, I think it's important too. I was listening to a, uh, uh, a guy talk. It, he was a, a Delta guy and with a question typically when you get the tier one special operators is like who's the best you know what's the and and the question was or the seal team the development group you know navy seal seal team six is that tougher than um the uh what are they combat whatever whatever cag yeah cag and which is the delta force is what people that civilians typically call them anyway he said the main the he said he's going to go with the uh, the army because in the navy the selection process and this is just totally selection process selection process is group related in the navy so you had people that were next to you that could encourage you or that you could just see their behaviors and then you're going to gain energy from that and that um, you're you're doing th- you know you're carrying the logs carrying the boats everything is as a team so you can share each other's burden and and. If, if you need a break, you can actually get a break because there's five other people in your group that are also carrying the same log. And uh, he mentioned uh, short people be, getting an easy ride through uh, SEAL team um, selection because they never, they're never the tall one on the log that's carrying the most weight. They're always, you know, the shorter ones. And I thought, you know, that's life in general. The tall people have a harder life. I was sure. thinking that personally. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he said that, uh, you know, for uh, for Delta Force, the selection is you're alone. Like there's nobody there. There's absolutely nobody to assist you. You're not going on a course with people. You can't see other people. You, you're you just given a destination, uh, 80 pound ruck or however much it weighs and told you need to be there as fast as you can get there is it, do as try as hard as you can. And they have a time that you're supposed to be there by. You don't know what that time is. You just have to get there as fast as you can and you're alone. So, um, in, in, in that, that realm, you know, you think, well, it's, you're, you're more awesome if you went through a selection like that. But at the same time, if you are surrounded by people to help you, it's easier. Like that's what he's saying that the seal teams are easier because they're team team focused. 
which is if you're trying to be positive in 2023, who's on your team? Like, are they going to be there to help you be more positive? Or are they going to be people that are negative all the time and help drag you down? So uh, I thought that was pretty interesting on, you know, on one, we look at it, you know, from a special forces perspective, oh, they're, they're, they're more awesome because they did everything alone because it's easier when you do it as a team. Well, we don't necessarily need to make life harder. So right. we need yeah. to find that team that's aligned with what you want to be doing this year and make sure that the people you're spending time with are positive as well. Yeah. All right. Well, anything, man, I'm, I'm glad you joined the second half. So I did, uh, for the, you know, we're actually recording in the middle of the day, which is not normal. Yeah. It's crazy. Us, uh, but we have some things that have come up with our schedule, um, that allowed us to do this today. And so we're taking advantage of it. So we're going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back with uh, our top three actors who would play ourselves in a movie. Are you driving traffic to your website? Do you have an engaging homepage? Better yet, does your homepage have a video? We recently created a video for a client about his business and the services they provide. Since he placed the video on the homepage of their website, he has had a number of clients specifically say they decided to use his services because of that video. At Trussell Media, we help businesses create engaging videos to host on their websites, email to clients, and use in their social media marketing. Contact us if you're interested in creating a video for your homepage today. TrustleMedia.com. Fill out the form at TrustleMedia.com slash contact. Let us help you tell your story through video. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Grab that button. Yes. So, top three actors who would play you in a movie, Matt. Why don't you, why don't you let us know? I, right. didn't, I didn't think about this for you guys. This is hard for me. And I initially, when I heard it, I was like, "Oh, I'll come up with three for me, three for Matt, three for Troy." I didn't do that. I only got one for Matt. I'm wonder if it's on his list. We'll see. Uh, number three, the obvious, Gary Sinise. <laughs> <laughs> the obvious. He's he's two legged man. That was all yeah yeah. But effects. he's 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 done such a good job of of playing um, an amputee, an angry one. Uh, I think it. I think it'd go over well. Um, let's see. Number two, um, Kevin Costner, and <laughs> I don't see it. Think about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm think, thinking about it. Think about I've tried, him. Think I've about, tried. I don't see it. Think about his roles that he's he's played. It's not a looks thing. It's an attitude thing. In in basically every movie that he's played in, he has almost zero emotion. So whether he's Mr. Dutton, it's always, it's always analytical. It's, it's, I'm, I'm going to do it this way and, and I'm going to, you know, um, or, uh, what's the baseball one? Same, same kind of thing. He's going to do things his way, you know, and he might, he might mess Bull up. Durham. Yeah. Yeah. And it might, you know, it might screw up, might mess up, but he's still going to do it his way. Even if he has to learn the hard way. Um, and so that's kind of the way that I took it with that. And most of his roles are like that 10 cup, same, same thing. Um, and then uh, number one, Tom Berenger. Yeah, I, I can see that. That yeah. was the one I had in mind was uh, Tom Berenger. Yep, that's that's a that's a good fit. Why Tom Berenger? Oh, he's got a phone call. <laughs> Pizza. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'll go while Matt is going to talk to the uh, pizza delivery person since we're in the middle of the day and we need to eat lunch and, but we had to change because of Matt's schedule. So, um, that's right. We yeah. We're, we're adapting to me. He's being more positive and he's, uh, buying us lunch because of that. Number yeah. three. <laughs> anyway, but oh. so Tom Berenger. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys said you could see that. Why? Cause huh? I was on the phone. Oh, I, I think, I don't know. It's just a good fit. I think y'all kind of resemble each other i think you guys resemble same, each other especially the pictures pre-beard matt like, yeah well that and when you guys have like the same blockhead. well and when he's <laughs> in a uh, platoon and he's got the scar because the yeah. scar on his face is on the same side and yeah. blockhead i don't know how many people i've 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 told I've, or i've been told i was like yeah dude you look like tom berenger that's what i get yeah. the most so all right and plus he plays like the you know the zero emotion more so than Kevin Costner. 
That's that's for certain. Yeah. Kevin Costner's a nice guy. I don't know if Tom <clears throat> Barron is. I don't know. I've been around Kevin Costner. I'm pretty He's nice really guy. Nice. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. People are intimidated intimidated by you, big time. Number three, if there's a portrayal about me as a child in, in my younger years, if there's like a flashback, uh, a young Ricky Schroeder, little kid. Ricky Schroeder. Yeah. yeah. What, what show was that? I don't even remember. Was oh, that gosh, Silver Spoons? Remember. Yeah, was that, that, it? that was yeah? it. Yeah. Okay. A little rich kid. Yeah, I had that, that uh, whitish blonde hair. As, as a child. Uh, number two, Harrison Ford. And okay. all right, this is, this was my wife's response. Like if that gonna, was her pick. Yeah. I said, Hey, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, you know, have an actor play me in a movie, like what, what's the best one. And, and, uh, she said something about his attitude, you know, yeah. always kind of frustrated. And, <laughs> You know, with, that, uh, with, with the good. world going on around him. Right, yeah. Apparently, yeah. he points a lot in his movies. I don't point that much. but He I'm does gonna point do a lot. Yeah, I'm going to start pointing more just to just to get that. And then number one, uh, not the current age, but I, heck, he may not even be alive anymore. But I, of all the things, like strangers come up to me and tell me I look like Donald Sutherland when he was younger. So I would say based on the general populace of strangers that feel comfortable enough to approach us, tr- approach me without knowing me and say, Hey, you look exactly like a whatever that would be the vote that I've gotten the most over my lifetime, all the way back to college. And as recent as the end of October, uh, somebody came up out of the blue at a K state game and was like, Hey, have anybody ever told you you look like a young Donald, Donald Southern? I'm like, yeah, matter of fact. So that'd be the dude. According to IMDb, he is still alive. All right. <laughs> he was born July 17th. What? Why are you laughing? Why would he not be alive? Huh? Because he said I don't know he if may still or alive. may not yeah, be he's alive. Still alive. He was born in 1935, though. He's getting on up there. Yeah, he's getting old. 87? I don't even try to math me. 87? I, I started, uh, I, I just went like actors that are my height. Hey, you kind of look like an old like an old one too. Look at that. Hey, hey, what? I mean, you know, you know, Donald Sutherland from The Hunger Games or from Animal House. You hit both <laughs> of them. There you go. Wasn't he a Dirty Dozen too? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 That's All right. good. Troy. All right. So, I, man, I searched everywhere. Well, I'll start with number three first. So, when Varsity Blues came out, everybody told me I looked like James Vanderbeek or Dawson's Creek. Yeah. In high school. Everybody's like, oh, you look like Dawson. So was James, the, J- James the, Vanderbeek. Was it the puka shell necklace? <laughs> no, I didn't wear. Bull. I wore hemp necklaces. Oh, yeah, there you okay. go. Okay. <laughs> I knew I saw, I saw a picture with you wearing something like that. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, so that's number three. Number two was kind of from my college years. I looked everywhere for this actor's name. I could not find it. He was in some frat guy movie. It, it, around the time I was in college and he used to do this thing with his mouth like that. That's kind of gross. Don't yeah. do that again. I, I so just, I'm just going to do it once. You're, hold on. You're number two. I'm just going to get this clear is some actor that was only in one movie and you can't remember his name. He's been in multiple movies, but he always has like these like really secondary or like third, 80, 80s movies. No, not like two year two thousand ish. Yeah, but he did that in Are that you, movie. Did you just Google? I, I know who it is. Hold on. Did you do you remember what movie I'm talking about? Yeah, Lachlan Munro. Let me see. Let me see his. Let me see his picture. I don't know about this. That guy. That's him. Yes. <laughs> What movie was that where he did that mouth thing? I don't know. Uh, he's done it about. in a couple, but Dead Man on Campus. Dead Man on Campus. That's the movie. Lockland Mon- Monroe. Mon- yeah, in the uh, Monroe. Shades. If you're from the South, that's Monroe. Wasn't Shades from that thing you do? Wasn't he in that movie? I think so. Anyway, that's my number two. Yeah, but he wasn't Shades. No, he wasn't Shades, but Shades was in that movie too. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think he was in that movie. 
Um, well, that's pretty good. If you were to just kind of say that and he's like, yeah, I agree. Then, yeah, all right. That's confirmation. Yeah, confirmation. Everybody in college was like, man, you look like that, dude. I yeah. never saw it, but everybody said I did. So, Well, I can see it, and then I get extra points for knowing that sound that you made. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you get I two- knew exactly who it was. Oh, really? And I knew exactly the point in the movie when he did it. Okay. <laughs> you get two gold stars. I looked up. I Googled that forever, like, weird google searches last night just trying to find that guy i couldn't find it anyway troy's internet search history uh crazy looking guy that makes mouth noises in movies from the early 2000s i mean that was probably one of them because well, it was in that in that movie when he's doing because he does it a few times he's in that a movie. frat guy and he 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 almost dies like four and, or five times in the movie yeah yeah it, yeah well and that part is hey you want to uh, what do a what was it do a bong and and smoke some weed or something? Yeah, like and that. then yeah. he does the the noise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that movie. It's it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. Um, and then number one, young or old, the older I get, the more I look like this guy, Steve Martin. Really? Huh? White hair, big Steve, nose. No? Steve Martin had white hair when he was like. 20. I know. That's why I said young or old. <laughs> The older I get, I look like him. I don't know about that. I saw. Uh, I don't know. I couldn't come up with a third. I saw on the uh, the internet's last night that that's a sign of a copper deficiency. True or not? I I don't know, but it just. I just found out that I have copper pipes running all through my house, so I get plenty of copper. I'm sure the amount of water I drink. But you have to have the uh, what's it called? Uh, oh, something to help your body uh, metabolize it. I can't remember what it's called. Uh. Uh, so that, does that mean if you get, like, I wear a copper bracelet, then my hair's going to turn? It might turn back to a normal color. Really? I don't know about this. I don't either. It, you know, I mean, I'm going to buy it, three. It, <laughs> it's almost, it was almost a little clickbaity. My, uh, my dad had, had gray hair, white hair early. And I, I have very few memories with him with dark hair. Well, I mean, the only reason is because there was an article on Albert Einstein that said that he died of a copper deficiency. and He always had white hair? He didn't always have white hair. He had it for a long time, though. <clears throat> anyway, All right. Whatever. whatever. It was just a, a fact that came up. Any any honorable mentions there? Yeah. Um, I was trying to think of a robot. <laughs> Terminator. <laughs> Robocop. Uh, the, what is, uh, I had Mark, Mark Paul Gossler for one of mine, Zach Morris, Zach Morris, Zach attack. Um, Oh, what Miller in, um, he was in Lord of the Rings. I'm out the, <laughs> the <laughs> evil sorcerer that was Gandalf's, uh, nemesis head of his, whatever. I don't know his real um, name. Uh, the uh, so, not Saruman, Saruman, the white. Yeah, the white yeah. wizard. Yeah, he was also Count Dooku. That guy. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. guy. Yeah. I don't know his name. I think it's Miller. I'm pretty sure. Where a cast? I'm looking. Um, yeah, well, your pizza here yet, Matt? No. I know our listener. Ah, Lee. Know. Chris, Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That dude was bad to the bone. He was, uh, before in World War II, he was a, uh, like a special forces guy for Britain. Oh, yeah. And, uh, there, dude, there's this a clip in, um, uh, uh, Peter Jackson documentary where, you know, he's directing and he's like, you know, this dude gets stabbed from in the back and whatever. And, and, and Peter Jackson's like, and I want him to go like, ah, you know, and, and, uh, Christopher Lee's like actually in his accent or whatever, when you get stabbed in the back, it makes this sound. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, wow. like, he's like, Oh, and Peter Jackson's like, oh, okay, man, we'll do that. <laughs> like, we'll do that yeah, instead. Yeah, whatever I think you, you say. know. Yeah. Whatever what movie say. was that? That was Lord of the Lord Rings. Lord of the Rings. Was it Lord of the Rings? I saw that interview, I guess, yeah. where he was talking about that. So I, I guess I know what you're talking about yeah. from, from that. Yeah. And you should that should make you want to watch the movie no. when World War II veterans were in it. I've tried. Yeah, whatever. 
All right, we're going to move on to a good, a good word from the guy over here that just won't even watch movies that are good. <laughs> but knew just a random off-the-wall sound. <laughs> from a movie, right? From a movie. Still, you'll watch and know those movies, but you won't watch like good stuff. I Classics. Like, I like comedy. Uh, I like comedy more than any other uh, genre. Um, so uh, the good word, there's actually two. All right. First one is engaged. <clears throat> Okay. Told you to remember that word from the beginning. Right. The second one was disengaged. So uh, the good word for today is the, I guess the challenge for this new year or the, the lifestyle change would be to be more engaged locally, whether that's with your family, with your friends, uh, your local government, your board of education, um, know what's going on at your children's schools with their teachers, um, just be more involved in your community locally. Um, everybody gets so wrapped up in what's going on in Washington. And, and while that's, you know, important, um, what, what, where the, where the change really happens is at the local level where you can affect um, the day to day that impacts your life. Um, Cause I get sucked into, Oh, you know, big brother. And, and you know, what are we going to do here? And it starts here. It starts at home. It starts in the home and then branching that out into the community. Um, so be more engaged with your family and then disengage from the news, disengage from watching and, and being constantly focused on what they're, what they're preaching, what they're pushing out, because it's all part of an agenda. It's all part of a, a way to control the way you think. And so if you're trying to think positive and you watch that news, it's hard to get anything positive out of the news. They might give you a 30 second snippet at the end of, you know, Hey, some, you know, somebody helped this, this person and, and we should all feel good about it. But the other, you know, 29 minutes and 30 seconds of their broadcast is negative. So disengage from that, because if you uh, just like uh, uh, Chet said before, you know, when you surround your, you know, gave the example of the special forces, when you surround yourself with a with a team that's got a common goal, it's easier to accomplish. Well, if if part of your team is that media and they're pushing a negative uh, agenda, then they're not they're not helping you out. So. Uh, fill yourself with positivity, you know, whether that's a, a daily devotional, um, talking to people who um, want to be positive with you and, and announce that to them and say, hey, I'd like to be positive, but just disengage from those negative aspects. For, and and that, that includes the news and, and social media. And do less of those things and, and interact more on a local level with people around you because you're more likely to affect those people than you are anybody on the TV, online, or in D.C. So that's my good word. I like it. Well, nice. ha happy new year, everyone. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, spread the word. Thanks for listening to the Hard Headed Podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet, please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.